What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is my first time here in Tampa. We're at Hard Rock right now. Cool little uh, poker sign. It might be really echoey, but I just busted the tournament. No one likes watching tournament busts, so I'm gonna go hop into the cash game. It looks like there's a 10-10 running right now. I'm not sure what the max buy-in is. I'm not really sure what anything is right now, but the room's pretty cool. Let me show you guys. Just got into, uh, I just landed like earlier today. I'm here for a tournament series, but of course you all wanna see cash games, so I'm gonna buy in. I have a tray full of chips. I don't know how much I can buy in for, but let's find out. It's 10-10 and that's, that's all I know. So let's just try to grind it up and maybe win some money because someone's gotta pay for all these tournament busts, right? So immediately when I sit down to this 10-10 game, I ask what the biggest game that runs is and immediately everyone agrees to snap make this game a little bit bigger. It's going to be 10-25 uncapped. Am I the fish at the table or am I gonna make a little bit more money with the game going up? Anyways, let's play. I'm in for $10,000 to start and this first hand with ace jack off suit. I'm in the small mine and there's a hijack raise to $75 on a short stack. This hand is mediocre at best, but playing short stack poker against the opener, I have three bets to $300 and the hijack player ends up going all in. Not much, maybe about $400 total, so pretty short stacked. I obviously make the call, and it's a flip. Tournament flip, I'm up against pocket nines, and let's win. Ooh, slip, slip. Nice sound. Flop brings me no help, and pocket nines is just going to hold. Just like in tournaments, I can't win flips in cash either, so nice hand of pocket nines. I pay him a total of $380, and right off the bat, starting off on the wrong foot. With the action underway, I add on for $20,000 more, so I'm in the game for $30,000 total, and here we are battling again, jack 10 off suit in the big blind. It's a cutoff player who raises to $75, same player as last time that I doubled up. Anyways, now with the newfound doubled up chips, I make the call with a playable hand, and we're off to a flop which comes queen, jack, seven, rainbow. Action's gonna go check, check here with my middle pair, and the turn is the four of spades. Brings in the backdoor flush draw, and I don't really see a point in betting here with middle pair. I check it over to him, and he bets $100. Obviously, as played, not gonna go anywhere. Pair is hard to make. Middle pair is not so bad, especially when he checks through on the flop. I make the call. River now is the three of spades. The flush completes, and kind of just wanting to get to showdown right now, and when I check it over to him, he decides to go all in. Total of $640. Oh, boy. I guess uh, I just fold? He seems so strong and maybe he just has a flush. Who knows what he could have here, but I think middle pair is a little too weak to call off facing an all-in on the river. It's hard to find players who bluff here for this size, and yeah, I guess I'm going to give him more and more chips. I came in and I'm doubling up and giving more chips to the short stack. Hopefully this next hand goes better. I have queen nine of hearts. It's a natural nine in Baccarat. That's why I raised it up to $75 and a lot of action here on this table. Four players around make the call. So five ways to a flop of five, five, four, two hearts. Flopping a flush draw, not so bad. And considering the multi-way dynamics, I started to check and then the player to my left bets out $150. Action quickly folds around to me, so now we're going from five ways to a flop. Now probably going heads up to a turn here, thinking that at the very least there's a lot of merit to check raising right now. Thinking that I have the advantage with over pairs, and how likely is this player going to call with a five when I raise and he's next to act? Anyways, I opted on the passive route to just to make the call here, so we're off to see a turn, which is the Bink King of Hearts. Nice to bink a flush, and even better to king, as now I have the second nut flush. I check it over to my opponent, and he decides to bet out 400 music to my ears. This player has about 6,000 behind, and with such a strong hand like mine, I just think I want to get more money in the middle here. Now I'm kind of praying for him to have a five, and although it is a little bit suspicious and dicey that the board is paired, still want to get stacks in, still want to get some money in, so I decided to check raise on the larger side to $1,800. Upon my check raise, my opponent thinks about it for a while and sadly just ends up folding. All right, I don't make any more money here, but it's nice to get paid and finally on the winning direction here. The very next deal, back into the action we go, picking up pocket jacks. I raise it up to $75, the player on my left who I just beat in the pot, three bets to 225. Maybe he's getting involved, trying to get some revenge after that last hand, but action falls to the small blind player who goes all in. 
It's a total of $800. And this is the opponent that I doubled up in the very beginning. The player on my left, like I said, has about 6,000 in his stack. And with pocket jacks, not feeling comfortable if my opponent wants to re-raise here, but not gonna go anywhere. Time to get my chips back that I dumped off in the beginning. I make the call, player on my left folds rather quickly, and will I double him up again, or will I win? The flop comes ace high. That, that just can't be good. And my opponent, of course, shows ace king. This player in the one seat is absolutely loving me. He started off with only $380 in his stack, and just like that, after two double ups in a tournament style, he now has over $1,700. I'm so good at winning flips, guys. Just, just losing them all. Moving on to the next spot with ace three of hearts on the button. There's an only gun open to $75. Plus one player makes the call and now on to me here, sitting on the button thinking that this might be a pretty good spot to squeeze. Pretty good hand to do it with, but the issue here is that I just think this only gun player who raised is going to be pretty narrow. So I decided on just making the call and the big blind ends up calling as well. So four ways to a flop here with a wheel ace. The flop is ace king five rainbow. Not a bad flop with top pair. Don't really have any back doors as no heart is on the flop, but top pair, no kicker. The ungun player decides to continue for $150. Early position plus one makes the fold and now onto me. I already don't love this spot to be honest. The ungun range is supposed to be super narrow and he can have all the ace king, ace queen, pocket kings. Just all these very strong hands on this board, but it would be a little crazy to fold right now. So got to make the call and the big blind folds. Now it heads up to a turn, which is the nine of hearts. I wish this card helped me. Wish there was a heart on the flop, but my opponent decides to increase the size of the bet and ramps it up to $750. And unfortunately now at this pace, it's gonna to have to be an easy fold. Seems like this guy is going to have a narrow range, like I said, seems like this guy's gonna go for value. And you know, when he has the range and nut advantage, just think that I can pass up on these marginal spots with a weak top pair. So trying to bleed these players, trying to make more disciplined folds. This is something you don't see very often. I just muck top pair and throw it into the muck. All right, from ace three to ace jack offsuit, there's a $50 straddle on, so stakes are increased for this hand. There's a low jack raise to $150 here, and now on the cutoff, I think in this specific instance, I'd rather call versus three bets. So when I make the call, everyone else folds, so going heads up to a flop of ace, queen, eight, two, diamonds. He starts off with a bet of $125, and for this price here, top pair, decent kicker, I'm happy to make the call. Don't think I have any other options. We're off to a turn, which is the six of clubs. Pretty brick card, and now my opponent checks. I think now I'm pretty confident I have the best hand, thinking that better hands should absolutely bet for value. Maybe he has a diamond draw, maybe he has a smaller pocket pair, or just a queen. So I decided to bet out $325, sizing up. Let's get value with ace jack. Granted, a little bit marginal. Maybe he can have just worse aces, but who knows? For 325, he's sticking around and makes the call. Not seeing a check raise, like I said. Now confident I have the winner. And then when the river comes, the brickest card in the deck, the deuce of hearts. He checks for a second time on this river. And like I said, I think I have the best hand. And the issue is that I think if I bet, it would be for very thin value. So I'm thinking in my head how much I want to bet for value. And now I stumble upon the option to potentially polarize and bet close to the size of the pot. It would make him call potentially lighter with a queen of some sorts, thinking that I just might be bluffing. So, you know, I'm known to be a punter anyways. So why not blast off $1,200 but this time it's for value. Honestly, the issue is that there might be a chance I do get called off by ace king or a better ace, but when this opponent doesn't snap call my $1,200 bet and goes into the tank, I feel much, much better about it. And ultimately he ends up talking out loud and says that I only have pocket eights here. Well, if he loses to a set, does he just lose to an ace as well? Ultimately he's curious and sticks in a call. I show the ace jack, and it is going to win this one. Awesome. Nice to take down the first decent pot of the night, and it's the biggest pot I've played in so far. Gotta love that. After winning a pretty big hand, why not spice it up with the seven deuce of hearts on the small blind? There's a $50 straddle on, and action folds to me. You know, there's no seven deuce game happening, but I'm gonna play it in my own head. I raise it up to $200 out of position and only get the $50 straddler to call. Seems like a pretty good reg here at the table. 
We're going to a flop, which comes king, jack, high. Here, out of position, seven high. Uh, I'm going to start off with a check on this one. And my opponent checks back. Turn is a queen, and you know, at least this board should favor me a little bit as the preflop aggressor. And seeing my opponent show some passivity in checking back on the flop, I decided to blast out $350. Fold, please, because I don't want to lose $350 in this hand, but uh, here we are. He does not fold, he actually makes the call. Let's battle. The river is a bank deuce, a pair. Just kidding, guys. Obviously, I know my pair isn't good at all, especially bottom pair at that. And for that reason, thinking that, you know, there's only one way to win it, and it's going to be blasting out. I blast out $1,000, hoping to just get a jack or queen to fold. And he does. He lets his cards go. He's saying he folded ace jack. And of course, I'm going to have to show the nuts seven deuce. It's great for the game. And showing the seven deuce is always fun for the table to see. So I receive zero bounties, like I said, because I'm the only one participating in this seven deuce game. But here we are getting this nice bluff through. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, I pick up queen jack of spades in the small blind, $50 shuttle on once again. When the hijack player, who seems relatively tight, raises it up to $150, I decide to call out of the small blind and the straddle calls as well. Now three ways to a flop to king, nine, four, two spades. Flopping a combo draw, not a bad way to end the night. Let's hit this one. Action checks to the cutoff player who c-bets $225. Now onto me, playing out of position. Definitely have a decision to either check raise or just make the call. And against someone who I deem to be rather tight, I just make the call, maybe play a little bit less variance and chill out for a little bit here. I call and the straddle folds. Now heads up to a turn, which is the king of hearts. All right, uh, I start off with the check, not loving this card, but my opponent doesn't love it either. He decides to check back. Seems like he might be a little bit imbalanced here. Don't think he's gonna have a king anymore when he checks back. Now to a river, which is the three of clubs. Brick city for me. All I've got is queen high and a dream. And when my opponent caps himself by checking back on this turn, I think I have a green light to blast out at this with queen high. I gotta find some bluffs here when I bet big. And this is certainly one of them. I blast out $750 as getting a fold is the only way I can win this pot, of course. And my opponent goes deep into the tank. Okay, let's fold, bro. My bluffs earlier were working out, but did I end up screwing myself now by showing that seven deuce bluff and potentially might get my opponent to call lighter? That's the issue when it comes to showing bluffs. People might start not believing you after that, but ultimately he ends up folding, which is super nice. I'll take down a couple hundred dollars in profit here. And what a great way to end off this session. Hey friends, I just cashed out. I just wanted to show you my room because I'm staying at the Hard Rock here and I get a pretty cool view of all the pool area and there's my bed and it's a good sized room. Anyways, uh, I don't know how many of you guys actually care about where I'm staying and such, but to recap the action, I, I won some hands. I won a good amount of hands today. I did lose a few smaller hands, but for the most part, all of the bigger hands and the biggest hands that I have played today in the session, I won, which is always really nice. Uh, I did come to a realization mid-session was that after coming on playing on Hustler a lot, uh, all of these cash games I've been traveling around to play, they don't even compare to, to what's going on at Hustler. Um, I think a uh, big shout out to Ryan Feldman and, and Hustler Live and all the staff. You guys ruined me. You guys completely ruined all cash games for me because it just hits so different. It's not even the same. We're playing like smaller pots and I don't know, something about it. It's all different, but um, hopefully I'll be back at Hustler sometime soon. You'll see that in the videos. But to recap today, I was in the game for $30,000. Uh, also, another thing is that no one really buys in super deep. Uh, a lot of people had like $5,000 stacks and we weren't playing $5,000 pots, that's for sure. So yeah, the biggest pot we played was like a $3,600 pot. Anyways, uh, in for $30,000, I was out for $32,605. Good day. Not a bad uh, day's worth of work in a few hours. Nice to be winning in the cash games once again. And thanks so much for watching, sticking till the end. I'm here for a whole week. I'm not sure how many videos I'll be making because I'm gonna slow down on the tournament stuff. I'm here to play tournaments, but I know that you guys don't really care a whole lot about the tournament journey. It's not as entertaining and maybe uh, 
I don't know, I'll find a way to do some, make some footage, make some videos and content out of it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm here for a full week of tournaments. If I run deep or do anything cool, you will know about it. If I don't, then just follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram for real-time updates. But I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.